Good times create weak people. Weak people create bad times. Bad times create strong people. Strong people create good times. Tony Robbins, a renowned motivational speaker, said this, don't you think he is right? Tony is a man who was dead poor. He was a broke dropout who sold himself for $200 to become the Tony Robbins we all know and love. So Tony managed to turn things around. How did he do it? How did he manage to turn things around for himself? Join us as we take you through Tony's story, filled with abuse, pain, and love. Welcome to a new episode of Who Is? Please subscribe and like the video if you want to be as motivated as Tony and let us know who you want to see next time at Who Is? Tony Robbins was born Anthony J. Mahaverick before he later changed his name. Tony was born in North Hollywood, California on February 29, 1960, and is the first of three children. Tony's early years were stressful, and you wouldn't believe the extent. His parents, who were both Croatians, got divorced when he was seven years old. Then, his mother went ahead and remarried several times. As you can imagine, Tony's childhood was chaotic. Then, as if having that kind of chaos wasn't enough, Tony had to deal with another problem entirely. His mother was an addict. When asked about his mother, Tony said, My mom made me feel loved, but she would also go the other side because she had substance abuse. One of the people his mother remarried was a former baseball player, Jim Robbins. Jim legally adopted Tony when he was 12. Finally, Tony found acceptance. Let's pause that. But before we proceed, let's hit the rewind button. Let's go back to the time when his father, John Mohorovic, and his mother, Nikki Robbins, were still living together with Tony and his siblings. This was one of Tony's saddest moments as the family was in poverty because their father could not adequately provide for their family. Apart from this, Tony's parents would always fight. One of those fights turned a Thanksgiving holiday into a miserable day for Tony. On that day, his parents got into a heated argument that quickly became a fight. For the family, they didn't think they had anything to be thankful for. They had nothing to eat and had no hope for tomorrow either. While the parents yelled at themselves in one room, Tony took his younger siblings into the next room to shield them from the commotion their parents caused. That day could have been saved when a stranger knocked at the door to offer them some food for Thanksgiving. However, his father was too furious to see the blessing. Although the parents stopped fighting momentarily while the food was being delivered, the fighting resumed after they got the food delivered. Tony was seven when he experienced this happening. While he could not understand the full extent of his parents' issues, he learned something. He realized the goodness of humanity and that there were still good people that cared. He determined he was going to care about strangers too. Something changed in him that day. Unfortunately for Tony, his parents never stopped fighting. Finally, one day they did, but not in the way you think. His dad, John Mohorovic, just walked out on the family and never returned. That was the day Tony's parents stopped fighting, and the family descended into chaos. Chaos was an ever-present entity within the family. It manifested itself in the form of drug abuse by Tony's mother, which pushed his mother to beat him regularly and eventually chase him out of the house at 17. Despite this abuse, Tony credits his ability to read people to his mother. Tony didn't learn this the healthiest way, though. For him, it was a life and death situation because if he severely misread a situation with his mother, she would beat him up. Knowing this sharpened his people reading skills. This tells you a lot about Tony. With all these negative experiences, he had found a way to spin them around for his betterment, using them as fuel to strive for change and improvement. After leaving home when he was 17, Tony worked odd jobs. At one time, he was a janitor, and at other times, he would wait tables, and things were not getting better. But how bad were things exactly? 
He got into an abusive, blood-sucking relationship with his now ex-girlfriend. The rent for his apartment then was $400, which he and his girlfriend split in half. So, because of the $200 his toxic girlfriend brought to the table, Tony stayed in the relationship he knew he should have broken off. He practically sold his soul for $200. Unfortunately for Tony, he never attended college. Everything was gloomy and looked like it would never get better. Then Tony decided, enough. He wanted change, so he did something crazy. Tony, still 17, went to his family friend and then landlord and asked a question that seemed rude. He asked, My dad said you used to be such a loser, and how come you're so successful now? With a smile on his face, the landlord answered him, My life changed when I attended a gym run. The path was clear for Tony, and since he also wanted to turn his life around, he asked if the landlord could help him purchase a ticket to a Jim Ron event, which costs $35. I could but wouldn't since you wouldn't value it. This was the reply young Tony got. This was a problem. Tony made $40 per week, so $35 seemed too much to spare for him. However, Tony had something. He had the hunger to turn his life around being greater than his will to keep some change. I made this big decision to spend a week's pay and go to this event and sat there, and I was mesmerized, Tony narrates. Attending this seminar cleared his focus and his life started to turn around from that moment. And if you want more content like this, subscribe to our channel. After the Jim Ron event, Tony dove into the world of motivational speaking hustling alongside legendary motivational speaker Jim Rohn. He kicked off his journey by promoting seminars for Jim. Ron, impressed by Tony's zeal, took him under his wing, becoming Robbins' mentor. However, Robbins hit a roadblock when he struggled to connect with his audience. He toiled tirelessly, fearing a future of poverty like his parents was inevitable. Following Ron's advice, Robbins switched gears, determined to find a fresh approach to engage his audience. In the 1980s, he explored neuro-linguistic programming, NLP, Ericksonian hypnosis, and other innovative methods for personal development and communication. Robbins even mastered the art of firewalking, adding an electrifying touch to his seminars. This show of innovation had never been seen before in motivational speaking, and things started to turn around for him. His teachings on how to become happy soon gained popularity. Tony believed and preached that true happiness is not contained in what you get, but in what you become. Ideologies like this motivated people to not find happiness in material things, but rather become the source of happiness for themselves. Catchy and simple, right? In 1988, Robbins hit the airwaves with his first infomercial, Personal Power capturing the attention of a massive audience. By 1991, an estimated 100 million Americans had tuned into his infomercials, propelling Robbins into the spotlight. In 1997, Robbins took his expertise to the next level, founding the Leadership Academy. This intensive four-day program aimed to mold great leaders by imparting skills in NLP, persuasion, non-verbal communication, and coaching. Tony made his first publication in 1988 with Lessons in Mastery, How to Use Your Personal Power to Create an Extraordinary Life. He has since then gone on to publish many best-selling books, the most prominent being Unleash the Power Within, which was published in 1999. In 2010, NBC rolled out Breakthrough with Tony Robbins, a reality show highlighting Robbins' journey and helping folks tackle their hurdles. Despite a promising start, the show got axed due to low viewership, but Tony's show got saved. Oprah Winfrey's own swooped in, giving the show another shot in 2012. 
Things got a bit heated in 2012 when reports surfaced about burns during one of Robbins' firewalking events. Despite some drama, Robbins and his crew defended their methods, insisting that most participants came out unscathed. In 2014, Robbins jumped into the soccer scene, teaming up to bring the Los Angeles football club to life. Filmmaker Joe Berlinger captured the essence of Robbins' Date with Destiny event in a documentary that hit screens in 2016, premiering at South by Southwest. It later landed on Netflix for all to see. Never one to shy away from new ventures, Robbins dipped his toes into the esports world in 2016, teaming up to nab Team Liquid. Tony Robbins has coached many famous people, such as Princess Diana, Bill Clinton, George Bush, Donald Trump, Justin Tuck, Serena Williams, and Pitbull, just to name a few. The key attribute to Tony's success came from being resilient. Resilience comes from putting herself on the line. It comes from playing with no net, Robin says. It comes when you trust yourself when you have to succeed. I always tell people you'll discover how resilient you are when you have to. I didn't do it for positioning. My heart knew what was right, and I did it, and I was rewarded. It was like the money showed up. What have you learned from Tony? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more.